So the Qatar actually knew in advance about Hamas' intentions to carry out the October 7th attacks on Israel. So everybody knows about the special relationship between Qatar and Hamas. But now a claim was brought up in a recent political article saying that Qatar knew in advance about the October 7th attacks on Israel. That article names Western intelligence officials, not naming anybody specifically, that are saying that there's definitely smoke, but no smoking gun yet. Now, unless Politico is completely making this up, why are they going to the press to even talk about it? Well, the reason is, essentially what they're saying is that we know they were involved. We can't do nothing about it due to politics, due to a whole bunch of BS. So we are leaking this to the media in order to try and get something done. And for any critical thinker, there's two questions here that we need to raise. Number one, how do we know that Qatar was actually updated in advance about what happened on October 7th? And the second question is actually even more interesting. If Qatar actually was involved in what transpired, why nothing can be done? At least in the way that pushed these intelligence officials to go public with this, knowing they cannot get it done through the official channels. And I think that's even the more interesting question here, because all you have to do here is just follow the money. On the one hand, Qatar was never embarrassed about openly supporting Hamas. They've paid them millions of dollars. They've supported the government. They've hosted the entire political bureau of Hamas in Qatar. And Al Jazeera, which is their own network, has been nothing but the PR arm of Hamas. On the other hand, Qatar is a major U.S. ally. The largest U.S. base in the Middle East is in Qatar. Qatar has become highly integrated in Western economies to the point where it's now basically one of the main suppliers of gas to the entire European Union after the exit of Russia from the picture. So there's a lot of questions here, a lot of conflicting interests. Why would Qatar do this? And for that, we have to understand the uniqueness of Qatar because Qatar is unlike any other country in the world. It's a tiny country, 400,000 citizens, 2.5 million migrant workers. It's tiny, and yet it is massively influential on the international stage. Despite its tiny size, it has major clout. It's number one in GDP per capita in the world. It has a sovereign wealth fund of $500 billion, which places it inside the top 10 list in the world. It owns 10% of VW Group. It has total ownership of PSG, the French club, multiple holdings in many other companies, massive donations to universities, massive involvement with international organizations. In fact, in London, Qatar is the number one property owner in the entire city, including hotels, financial centers, and even Heathrow Airport. Al Jazeera is massive. It's number two after BBC in the number of bureaus it has around the world. Qatar Airways, top 10 airline in the world. So these guys might be small, but they definitely are not irrelevant. The crazy part about Qatar is that although it sounds very religious, very Muslim, it's probably one of the most pragmatic Muslim countries around the world. So what does Qatar want? What's the angle here? They're pragmatists. They're all about influence and protection and protecting their own interests. So they do want a seat at the table. Qatar wants to become a global factor that dominates the Middle East as well as the rest of the world. It also wants protection. It doesn't want any beef with Iran. So it has a very strong and positive relationship with Iran. The idea here is we help you, you leave us alone. Don't do to us what you did to Saudi. And in return, we'll scratch you back when you need us. It also wants the protection of the United States. So it allows the United States to hold the biggest military base in the Middle East on Qatari soil. So that's how you get a country that is tiny, 3 million people, best friends with Iran, friendly with the United States, and is involved in every little tiny fraction of Western economies. Now, they also support ISIS to keep that in bay. If you go and look at statistics, they've suffered the least out of the hands of ISIS. Qatar wants to be a global shot caller. U.S. needs us. Iran 
needs us. We have a good relationship with ISIS. We have a good relationship with Hamas. We have a good relationship with Israel. We have a good relationship with Russia. We're a tiny country and nobody wants to screw with us. Qatari mindset used to be absolutely 180 degrees different. Everything changed in Qatar after Kuwait. The Kuwait invasion in the 90s changed everything. Before that, the Qataris didn't care about what happens outside their borders. Qatar was just another satellite state of Saudi Arabia. They were under the shadow, under the protection. But once Iraq invaded Kuwait and everything that transpired thereafter, the Qataris said to themselves, look, the Saudis cannot protect us against the bullies. We have to make sure that we build a network of interest that protects us. And ever since then, for the next 30 years, they've done exactly that. They built the largest media organization in the entire Arab world, Al Jazeera. They're funding universities, football clubs, organizations, banks, even officials, sometimes unofficially. They're funding lots of proxy groups around the world, like Hamas, like ISIS. So all this influence, all this clout that they're collecting, it's coming from this master plan to become so intertwined in the Western system that nobody will go against Qatar, no matter what. Okay, but how do we know for sure that Qatar knew in advance about the October 7th attacks and did nothing about it? Well, we don't know for sure. We don't have evidence. But if we follow the money, the picture becomes quite clear. Now, we know that Iran had a vested interest in completely derailing and destroying the Abraham Accords between the Saudis and the Israelis. Iran wants two things. Number one is to decrease the U.S. influence in the region, to kill the economic corridor of India, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Europe, the U.S. And on top of that, they're vying for dominance of who gets to be the leader of the Arab world, Saudi or Iran. That rivalry is basically who's going to be boss. Now, Qatar and Saudi also don't get along. Iran and Qatar have a strong alliance. And Qatar is a major energy player, especially in gas, especially now that Russia basically checked out out of Europe. So the Abraham Accords development and the establishment of a new economic corridor to which Iran and Qatar would not be a part of is not good. Qatar is probably the number two casualty right after Iran if the Abraham Accords happen and if that economic corridor, India, Saudi Arabia, Israel, EU happens. So they have a very similar interest as Iran. So if we follow the money, they definitely have motive. We have another question. Why nothing can be done? Why you have Western intelligence officials going to Politico to talk about this publicly? Why they feel helpless? Why nothing is done? If everybody knows that Qatar is playing a double game, why is nobody doing anything about it? Now, the answer is quite simple. And even though you may not like what I'm about to tell you, that's facts. You see, Qatar today cannot be decoupled from the West. Despite supporting ISIS, despite supporting Hamas, despite supporting Iran, all the West countries can do is get angry and get mad. But that's it. The Qatari money has taken over the West over the past 20 years. They've been buying up assets like crazy. I've mentioned VW, Heathrow, PSG, banks, real estate. They've been bribing officials. Look at what happened at the World Cup. Look at what's going on right now with the Olympics. Everything that can be bought in the West has been bought by Qatar. The goal is to become untouchable. And so far, they have been playing the best double game ever. Unlike Iran and China and Russia, where everything is clear, these guys managed to stay out of this while being the chef in the kitchen. And until we have an administration in the United States that is willing to take the punches and to live through the hurt of losing Qatari money and hold it accountable. Qatar will continue to be an agent of chaos, to finance terror, to cause mayhem, but to be friends with everyone. Now, let me know below if you agree or disagree with me. As always, these videos are not fully monetized. Check out our Patreon if you want to support this channel. I'll see you in the next one.